السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا بكم في حلقة جديدة من فيلم جامد وحلقة النهاردة حلقة خاصة فيها لقاءات جالي حظ من خلال نتفليكس أن أنا أجريها مع أسرة فيلم أرمي أوف ذا ديد اللي إن شاء الله هيتعرض يوم 21 مايو لو أنا فاكر كويس عندنا انترفيوز مع زاك سنايدر مع ديف باتيستا ومع عدد آخر من أبطال المسلسل إحنا في العادة في العادة الانترفيوز ديت بن بنعملها إيديتنج وبنقطعها وبننزلها داخل المراجعة بحيث أن المعلومات المعلومات القيمة اللي بتجيلنا من أسرة الفيلم أو المسلسل أو العمل اللي احنا بنتكلم عليه تثري المراجعة أكتر وأكتر بس المرة دي احنا عملنا انترفيوز لناس كتير قوي وتخطت ال 25 دقيقة فاللي هو حرام الكلام ده كله في الآخر يطلع منه دقيقتين أو ثلاثة بس ينزلوا في المراجعة عشان كده بشكل استثنائي قررت إن أنا في حلقة منفصلة إلا لو حضراتكم قلتوا لي في الكومنتس إن أنتم بتفضلوا ده إن احنا ننزل الانترفيوز تقريبا كاملة أنا بس الحاجات الوحيدة اللي استبعدتها هي الحاجات اللي بتحرق في تفاصيل تفاصيل الفيلم لان الفيلم لسه قدامه فتره عقبال ما ينزل لو انتوا حابين ان الانترفيوز من هنا ورايح تنزل بشكل منفصل قولوا لي وانا هعمل كده ان شاء الله اتمنى الانترفيوز تعجبكم ويلا بينا نخش في الموضوع I'd like to uh, start by asking a question about your filmography recently and where uh, Army of the Dead fits in it you've been in a large variety of subgenre of action films since you started your uh, acting career have you always wanted to add the zombie kind of films to that list <laughs> the kind of project that just popped in your path it really uh it really did it just <laughs> it kind of popped up uh, it uh it popped up for me I, I actually was at a party <laughs> and i ran into zach's agent um zach snyder's agent and i would always have conversations with him about a different project that we were trying to do together and zach, he told me that zach's pro next project was army of the dead and when he told me about it uh he described it as a zombie apocalypse kind of heist slash heist movie and i was like i said that sounds great sounds like a lot of fun but it wasn't what i was looking for But later down, you know, down the road, it came to my attention that, you know, Zach was interested in me playing Scott Ward. And when I read the script and saw, you know, kind of a, the great opportunity to, you know, show off a different side of myself as a performer, I thought it, it was great. But uh, yeah, no, initially it wasn't something I was looking for. I love the genre, but at that time I was just looking for um, films that would kind of highlight myself as, as an actor. I was really trying to prove my worth as, as an actor. So we can say that even the dramatic side of your character and the kind of struggle he was having and the connection yeah. to his family is yeah. partially what attracted you to the part. Oh, that's that's absolutely what attracted to me. There was a few different factors. Um, one was working with Zach. I really wanted to work with Zach. I'd been trying to work with Zach Snyder for years. Uh, two was the script. I've read the script and it wasn't at all what I thought it was going to be. And I thought it was just a great opportunity to not only be a badass, but also be a father who was just trying to redeem himself with his daughter. So that was, to me, that was the backbone of the story and the character was a redemption story. But also I really want to establish a working relationship with a business relationship with Netflix. I really think Netflix is such a great outlet and I wanted to be in business with them. They have such quality products, such great films. Uh, so I wanted to kind of build a, a little home for myself with Netflix. And how did you find the experience? Was it different from feature films headed to theater right away? It was, uh, well, the film making process was different. It wasn't different like in, in size. I mean, it was, it was, everything was big. Everything was epic. The, stu the, the sets were large and lots of people and obviously uh, very, very expensive. But what was different for me that I'd never experienced before is I'd never worked with a director who was also the cinematographer. So I'd never worked that close with a director who was standing there holding the camera. He was always on a camera. He was always in, you know, right there in it with us. He was in the, you know, in the, in the pit, getting dirty, sitting in the heat, right, just right in the action with us. Uh, he was just always right there. So it felt almost like he was uh, a part of the cast. It didn't feel like he was, you know, a director off sitting behind a tent watching a monitor. It just felt like he was in it with us. He was more in tune with the performances with us. Um, so that experience was was not only different, but it was also very special. Um, and I also got to see up, very up close and personal how Zach works, what he sees, what he's looking at through the camera, and how he comes across some of the stuff that he shoots. Uh, so for me, it was it was a bit of an education, which is what I was after. It was the reason I wanted to work with Zach, and which is also the reason I want to work with you know great directors in general. So yeah, that that as far as that goes, it was a completely new learning experience for me.
your character's relationship with that of Matthias is one that develops during the course of the events and during the movie and uh, does move from one phase to the other with a certain type of chemistry building between the two characters. So are there any trade secrets to that? And how did that chemistry build up between the two characters? It's a great question. I'll go with... Um... I'll go with the operative word and make or make one of the words that you said operative and that being secret. Um, I think for us, the secret that now, of course, uh, viewers and, and fans are a little bit perhaps more privy to uh, nowadays because of social media um, and what have you. There is such access now that their prior was not for um, for the process of this art that we call acting. Um, you know, it, it definitely is one where people don't necessarily ever know as much whether the character or the person who plays the, the character um, is what you're really looking at or who you're really looking at. Is it Matias? Is it Omari? Is it Dieter? Is it Van der Rohe? People are really confused. And I think, you know, you either go to three frames of thought. You either go to the place of like, oh, I can do that. They're just being themselves. Or you go, wow, that's really, really difficult. And I wouldn't even dare try it. Or you stand somewhere in the middle and you have questions and you forever, you know, want to show up at every symposium where, you know, an astute great question like you just asked would be asked and find out whether it's sort of a hybrid of the two, the character behind the character and then the character. So the secret of all, and I'll let it be known now from my mouth to the ears of all listening, um, is that Omari and Matias found a rapport, a chemistry, a, a kinship, a friendship, a brotherhood pretty immediate. Um, Perhaps by nature, we are trusting enough, um, you know, which is interesting because he kind of grew up alone and I grew up with a house full of people, but there must have been something in each other that we saw that allowed for this trust. Obviously, then the characters, once you add, you know, the pen of Zack Snyder and his writing partner to that reality, then there becomes, you know, you being able to capitalize on that, this natural chemistry. You can't teach chemistry. You can't purchase it at a supermarket or an acting class that you pay for. You either have it or you don't. So we had that thing that has sort of fostered this bromance of sorts. But we knew that um, once learning we had it, if anything, we had to dial up the contention between each other, right? So the, the things about each other in character that don't make each other rock with each other. We don't necessarily buy because we're so different. We kind of crank that up. So there's the secret of all because we felt like we had, you know, and I'll speak for Matias, in saying this, which is not fair um, to speak for him, but I'll try and do my best. We knew that we were sort of foundationally there in terms of knowing each other and feeling each other and trusting each other. So we just felt like if you could provide for Zach what he was asking us to provide, which is, as you stated, and it was really well put, as you said, these two faces, we knew that in the middle, the process would be, the journey would be, the the getting to know each other as this odd couple or odd duo who eventually become the face of kinship and brotherhood, we knew that the process was the sexiest part of, you know, the relationship that the viewer would be able to see. So we cranked up the contention and the discomfort in dealing with each other and the confusion on his part or the fear on his part. We just cranked that up so that you were a part of the process once we got to the other face, which was the final face of, man, they are inseparable. And, you know, we feel bad once they're pulled apart. So great question. Thank you. And uh, Matthias, you're playing a safe cracker, an attractive character in any heist film. Did you draw yeah. inspiration from any previous portrayal for the role? And uh, how did you manage the comedic tone around it? Mm, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of anyway, you know, I'm a huge fan of um, American movies about comedy. I had a, I love Will Smith and uh, I still love Will Smith and uh, Jim Carrey. I think uh, I saw every Jim Carrey movie ever made. Uh, and uh, so I was so attracted to, um, you know, this style of acting and, you know, choreography, timing. Uh, uh, how can I use a room? What's in the frame? What can I use, you know, with my partner, with Omari, with uh, what can we create? So um, uh, so that was like that was like a gift to to be the co comic relief. Is it right to say comic relief? Right. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. And uh and for the, I just did research, you know, on safe cracking. There was this champion. He's an American. He was so fast that he could it, he could hear, you know, um, he could crack a safe. I think under a minute, and it was like about 
senses. He was like so fast, and he, having he could feel a feather on a on a tumbler, you know, in the inside of the of a safe. Like when he when it, it, that's crazy. So it's crazy guy. So I tried to copy him. So you, you're also the, the, the cinematographer on this one. Was that yes. your decision? Yeah, I um, there was a lot of I had gone down a pretty deep rabbit hole uh, with this different lensing that I wanted to do on this movie as far as like, you know, the aperture and how I wanted to shoot the movie entirely wide open and all these. I started making all these decisions that I felt like was going to be unfair just to um, impose onto a DP because a lot of the, the things I wanted to do were slightly risky. And yeah. so then I just decided, oh, I'll just do it myself. And if it's a disaster, then I can take responsibility for it. <laughs> I see what you mean. But I, I think it worked fine. And I was just talking to Dave right now and he praised this particular element of having the director uh, right there in the scene and not in some tent monitoring what's going on. So yeah, was no, that also an added plus or something that you planned from the beginning? Yeah, it was a really, um, it was a super... It was an added thing that I didn't 100% um, see coming, this idea that I would, uh, that my proximity to the actors would be, you know, I've done it in TV commercials, of course, for 10 years. I, I know exactly how that is, but not really with drama per se, but it works out amazingly well um, to be able to be that close to the actors uh, and be able to really be intimate with them when I'm doing like a big close up you know, and they're like in this super intense emotional place, you know, having me there is different, I think, than just having the crew. Like, I, I feel like I'm offering some sort of support in those moments in, in, the, in the words of encouragement or slight modification to performance can be done in a really quiet and intimate way rather than like, okay, Kai, let's go look, blah, blah, blah. you know, it's like a whole thing. Or I'm just right there and I can just say like, you know, so yeah. that worked out really nicely. Maybe Nora had the most confrontations in the film with all types of zombies and all types of combat. So I would love to ask what kind of training and preparations did you have to go through for the role? A lot of uh, weapon training, right? which I was not the best at it, but we had amazing <laughs> people who uh, really helped us. I mean, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and I don't know, I did, um, I did a real... Uh, I worked on her body language, on her voice. Um, and I think I gained 10 pounds, but uh, because uh, we were drinking- So it worked uh, the other way around, no? Yeah, well, you know, I love uh, my uh, peanut butter milkshake in the morning, so right. I couldn't resist it. And so, yeah, I did, you know, but it's okay, why not? Ella, your, uh, one side of your character is the angry daughter who blames the father, which is not exactly uh, the first time we see it. We've seen it several times before. So how did you prepare for it? And what kind of work did you do to make it distinguishable or at least a bit different? Um, that's a good question. I think that the circumstances under which she became estranged from her father is very unique. You know, they go through this really terrible, quite unique tragedy. Um, and I actually don't think that I would describe her as the angry daughter because I think that she, that it might present itself as sort of a teenager with attitude or, you know, giving it some sass and some, some lip. But I think that if you think about what she's witnessed and the way that she's kind of been abandoned by somebody who was supposed to protect her and look after her over the four years since the tragedy. I think what you're really seeing is somebody who is hurt and somebody who doesn't know how to reconnect with somebody who should have been there and you know who should be a caretaker. Um, I suppose, how did I prepare for it? Um, I don't know, I, we just, we, I spoke a lot with Zach about, about the character and I spoke a lot with Dave and I think there is, a moment in the movie where each character sort of choose, or, or for myself anyway, where they have to choose to forgive someone. Like, you know, Scott doesn't do anything to warrant forgiveness, he doesn't. All that happens is they go into a, a zombie-filled environment, it's very life or death and, and things happen. 
that speed up the process. Um, but I, I do actually think it's a very unique storyline. I don't think that it's stereotypical. And that's what drew me to the writing in the first place is it's not cliched in that. It's not an angry daughter and a mean dad. You know, it's got its own nuances to it. كانت لقاءات حلوة أنا تعلمت منها حاجات وسعدت جدا بالناس إنها منفتحة وعاوزة تتكلم طبعا الناس دي بتشوف الويل يا جماعة بتتكلم مع عدد كبير جدا من الصحفيين وعدد كبير جدا من النقاد وبيسألوا أسئلة مكررة وهم مضطرين إن هم يجاوبوا نفس الإجابة مليون مرة فأنا متشكر ليهم جدا وسعيد جدا بالفرصة وأتمنى إن أنتم كمان تكونوا انبسطتوا بيها ألف شكر لحضراتكم على المشاهدة يا ريت تعملوا شير ولايك للحلقة لو عجبتكم اشتركوا في القناة وشغلوا جرس التنبيهات عشان تجيلكم الحلقات أول بأول تابعونا على فيسبوك تويتر ونيمو انستغرام وباي باي